The Pacific Fleet, Baltic Fleet, and Northern Fleet, all integral components of Russia's naval forces, have commenced extensive exercises. According to a press release from the Russian Defense Ministry, these planned drills involve more than 300 warships, submarines, cutters, and auxiliary vessels, over 50 aircraft, around 200 units of specialized military equipment, and over 20,000 military personnel. Simultaneously, sections of the Pacific Fleet in Primory and Kamchatka have moved into designated sea areas to partake in these scheduled exercises. Recently, tactical groups from the Pacific Fleet deployed from their bases in Vladivostok, accompanied by warships and cutters from the FSB's border management in Primorsky Krai. They will carry out comprehensive combat training exercises designed to detect, identify, and engage targets mimicking small surface and air objects. These activities are part of the interagency exercise aimed at protecting and defending bases and sea communications, the military department's press service stated. In Kamchatka, sailors are focusing on security and defense strategies, not just for their ships but also for shore facilities and bases. They're also working on improving collaboration between various ministries and departments. The Pacific Fleet stated, during these extensive exercises, military units and forces of the Northeast, along with the border management of the FSB of Russia for the Eastern Arctic region, the Ministry of Emergencies, the Ministry of Internal Affairs, and other federal and regional services, are participating. Since Russia launched its invasion of Ukraine in February 2022, it has been busy with numerous military exercises, some conducted solo and others with countries like China and South Africa. In the last two months alone, Russia has ramped up mobile nuclear missile launcher drills and tactical nuclear weapons deployment exercises. Additionally, it has intensified military training with Belarus, a country that shares borders with both Russia and Ukraine, running a series of comprehensive drills. The Russian Navy's exercise to detect, recognize, and engage targets often involves the use of various simulated threats to test the capabilities of their submarines and other naval assets. These targets can include small-sized surface objects, such as unmanned surface vessels, USVs, or small boats, which mimic the characteristics of potential adversarial vessels that might be used in asymmetric warfare or covert operations. In addition to surface targets, the exercise also includes air objects, which can be represented by drones or unmanned aerial vehicles UAVs. These aerial targets are designed to simulate enemy aircraft or missiles, providing a realistic training environment for the crew to practice their detection and engagement protocols. The use of these simulated targets allows the Russian Navy to evaluate the effectiveness of their sonar, radar, and other sensor systems in identifying and tracking small, fast-moving objects. By incorporating a variety of target types in their exercises, the Russian Navy can also assess the performance of their weapon systems, such as torpedoes and anti-aircraft missiles, in engaging and neutralizing these threats. These exercises are not only about testing hardware but also about refining the tactics and procedures used by the submarine crews. The ability to quickly and accurately identify and engage small-sized surface and air targets is a critical skill that can make a significant difference in the outcome of naval engagements. The Russian Pacific Fleet boasts several formidable battleships and submarines, each equipped with advanced technology and weaponry. Among the most dangerous are the Kirov-class battlecruisers and the Bore-class nuclear-powered ballistic missile submarines. These vessels are designed to project power and maintain strategic deterrence in the Pacific region.
Here of class battle cruisers, such as the Admiral Nakamov, are among the largest and most heavily armed surface combatants in the world. They are equipped with a variety of weapons, including P-700 granite anti-ship missiles, S-300F and S-300FM surface-to-air missiles, and a range of anti-submarine warfare systems. These battle cruisers also feature advanced radar and electronic warfare capabilities, making them a significant threat to any adversary. The Bore class submarines, including the Alexander Nevsky and Vladimir Monomat, are the backbone of Russia's strategic nuclear deterrent in the Pacific. These submarines are armed with Balava Intercontinental Ballistic Missiles ICBMs, each capable of carrying multiple nuclear warheads. The Bore class also features improved stealth characteristics, advanced sonar systems, and the ability to operate at greater depths, making them difficult to detect and counter. Another notable addition to the Russian Pacific Fleet is the Yasin class nuclear-powered attack submarines. These submarines, such as the Kazan and Novosibirsk, are designed for a variety of missions, including anti-ship and anti-submarine warfare, as well as land attack missions. They are equipped with a mix of caliber and onyx cruise missiles, torpedoes, and mines. The Yasin class submarines are known for their low acoustic signatures, making them highly stealthy and challenging to track. The Pacific Fleet also includes the Oscar II class submarines, such as the Irkutska and Tomsk. These submarines are primarily designed for anti-ship warfare and are armed with P-700 granite cruise missiles, which can deliver a devastating blow to enemy surface vessels. The Oscar II class submarines also feature robust sonar and electronic warfare systems, enhancing their effectiveness in combat scenarios.